All right, so now we're going to describe how um, Voronoi diagrams can be uh, sort of described in terms of stereographic projections and sphere inversions. Okay. So Voronoi diagrams. So we'll, we will uh, use sort of stereographic projections. Sphere inversions uh, to construct um, Voronoi diagrams. <coughs> and then, as it will turn out, the um, the nerve, it's like associated these Voronoi diagrams, it's like will induce a complex called the Delaunay complex, right? Okay, and so, so we construct this. Sort of given again a finite set of points. It's called that S, which is contained in RD. Okay. Okay. So first we define this idea of a Voronoi cell. And the basic idea basically for a Voronoi cell is that you have these set of points and then the Voronoi cell associated with one of those points uh, is the set of uh, points in RD, it's like which is closer to that one point as opposed to the other points uh, in the set S. Okay, so define a Voronoi cell for a point, let's say U, which is contained in S. And uh, the Voronoi cell VU, it's like associated with that point, is the set of X's in RD with the property that uh, the distance from X to uh, the point U is less than equal to the distance from X um, to a point V where V is in the, uh, the set S. Okay. All right, so, uh, so you probably know that if you have two points, it's like in RD, then there's the idea of the bisecting plane uh, between them, um, which consists of the points which are equidistant um, from both points, okay? And then depending on whether you're to the left or to the right of it, it's like uh, you, um, you know, it's like you'd be close to one point or the other, right? Uh, so the intuition, if you will, is that if you, uh, if you want to construct this Voronoi cell, Right, it's going to consist of the intersection of a bunch of these half spaces, uh, whose um, sort of boundary, right, uh, is uh, is exactly these uh, bisecting uh, planes. So, so this uh, Voronoi cell, so this, uh, right, consists of the intersection. Half planes right basically because for every pair of distinct points there is this uh, sort of um, hyperplane it's like which splits the uh, RD it's like into set points which are closer to one or the other point okay so uh, so this consists of the intersection of uh, half planes and so this VU right has to be some sort of convex uh, polyhedron. Okay. And, uh, and the other observation is that the Voronoi cells uh, only really intersect um, at um, most on the common piece of their boundary. Okay.
Okay. Uh, and then the other observation, obviously, is that, uh, you know, um, given the fact that you have only a finite set of points, right, e every point in Rd, uh, it has to be um, one point, it's like out of uh, S, it's like where um, that point is closest to, okay? So what that basically means then is that um, for every point it's like in Rd, it's like is, belongs to, you know, at least one Voronoi cell. Okay, so, so that then means that union, it's like over all the Voronoi cells, right, uh, is Rd, right? So the union, uh, union over, uh, let's say, U in S of Vu, right, covers uh, Rd, right? And then uh, we have what is called the Voronoi diagram, which is just a collection of Voronoi cells for all points uh, in the set S. So, and the Voronoi diagram of S, right, consists of is the collection For our noise cells, <coughs> of its points, right? Okay. All right. So, so that's sort of the, the basic setup for Voronoi cells and uh, Voronoi diagrams. Uh, so it turns out that. Um, there is, um, as I said, it's like, as I alluded to here, it's like there's also a characterization in terms of stereographic projections and sphere inversions. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, it, um, it is helpful to try to generalize these idea of uh, Voronoi cells a little bit. Uh, and the way we're going to try to do this is to essentially um, introduce um, weights to each of the points um, and then, um, you know, tweak this notion of a Voronoi cell slightly, it's like to accommodate the fact that you have these weights. So, so let's see how you go about doing this. So we can generalize this construction. By uh, assigning weights. Let's call it WU, right, to each point. S, okay, um, and then once you have these weights, it's like what we're going to do is we're going to tweak the notion of the distance, okay, so, and introduce a weighted square distance, or sometimes referred to as power. Okay, and uh, I'm just going to note this as pi u of x, right? Okay, so this is just going to be the norm squared of the difference as before, right? But I'm going to subtract off its like the weight. Okay, and then for positive weights, uh, View the weighted point as a sphere. Uh, with uh, center U and radius um, 
let's see, w squared. Okay. All right. So, um, so the same way that you know, it's like when you just have the usual distance, it's like there's the idea of a bisector uh, between two points, uh, which is again the set of points which are equidistant. It's like from those two points, uh, you can imagine it's like introducing a bisector uh, in the weighted case by uh, replacing it's like the definition where you say that things are equidistant. Um, it's like to saying that you want a set of points x. It's like which are have equal power, it's like to the points say u and v, okay? So uh, the bisector, right, of weighted points. Is the set of points uh, equal weights, or oh, equal power, sorry, uh, from the two points, from both points, okay? So that's kind of a natural generalization. It's like of bisectors uh, in the unweighted case to the bisectors in the weighted case. Okay. So this, uh, so once you have the bisectors, of obviously it's like you can do the same construction we had before, where you take the intersections of the half planes, it's like which uh, have the bisectors as boundaries, in order to construct then a, um, you know, a weighted Voronoi soil or power cell, and the corresponding weighted uh, Voronoi diagram or power diagram. Okay, so this induces. For a noise cell. Oops. Right, or power cell. And uh, the weighted for a noise diagram. Or power diagram. Okay, all right. So, um, so with that in mind, it's like the next thing we're going to do is to try to see how we can interpret all of this uh, in terms of sphere inversions and stereographic projections. So let me just stop here for now. <coughs>